<laughs> and key figures uh, for this case are William Nashwinter, who was the general manager of the Gravins division of uh, Dottie's Foods, and then <laughs> Thomas Wilson, uh, who's the audit manager uh, at Goodman & Company, and then eventually became the audit partner uh, in 1981. And then Frank Pollard, who was the audit supervisor at Goodman & Company, and then Price Waterhouse, who was the CPA firm, uh, who eventually came in when the inventory errors were discovered uh, later in the 1980s. Um, so this case starts with Nash Winter uh, joining Dottie Foods uh, as a salesman in the late 1970s. And very soon after this, uh, he was promoted to general manager of the Gravins division, where he began to struggle a lot with how to be a good manager, and he was realizing how difficult these goals his superiors were giving him were to fulfill. So his best idea they came up with was to fabricate inventory uh, to increase the division's gross profit. In Goodman Company, the auditors, Wilson and Pollard, uh, did a very lackluster job checking the inventory. They didn't feel like going into the freezer or doing all the checks that they should have, even when some staff auditors came forward about some issues. Um, like one staff auditor came forward and point out that the count sheets didn't reconcile with the computer printouts. And then Wilson never followed, followed up on the issue. And eventually, after a few years, Nash Water came forward uh, and revealed his scheme to his superiors and uh, was subsequently fired. So the outcomes of this case where the SEC only punished Wilson and Pollard, um, the engagement partner and the audit supervisor. Um, they were required to take uh, professional development courses um, and their future work was going to be peer reviewed from there on out. Goodman and Company were let off on this um, at, as they had established um, quality control uh, standards um, and Wilson and Pollard were found to have not followed them. Nash Winter uh, signed an agreement to not violate federal security laws in the future, um, but never admitted whether or not he manipulated the numbers for the inventories. Um, and there were no documented lawsuits against Goldman and company um, uh, relating to the Dirty Foods. Um, so they're either, fought, uh, they either um, finished out of, they, <coughs> they either settled out of uh, court or they weren't, or it wasn't large enough uh, that it mattered. So now we're going to move on to the discussion. Of the three parties, Dirty Food Inc., William, and Na William Nash Winter, and Goldman and Company, who do you believe should be held the most responsible? Question two. How would you classify Wilson and Powler's actions? Negligent or gross negligent? Do you believe that their punishment uh, fit their conduct? The third question. The SEC did not uh, sanction Goodman & Company, um, the audit, auditing firm, um, citing that the firm had established quality control standards and that the auditors neglected to follow them. Do you believe that, they, uh, that because they established the standards um, that they should have been absolved of their employees' actions? Um, do you, and the fourth question. Do you believe the SEC's actions against Nash Winner uh, were enough? Should the fact that he came forward with this fraud um, play into the decision um, to, uh, for his punishment? Thank you.
key standards we're going to be discussing today are broke, break them up into two parts. The first are AICPA. Um, the three major ones we're going to focus on are AUC 240, consideration of fraud, AUC 315, and AUC 330. Obviously, AUC 240 is the first and most prevalent one. Um, there's clear signs of fraud that were overlooked, and the accumulation of standards that were overlooked led to the consider of fraud, consideration of fraud to be um, overlooked. Uh, most specifically, if we look into the inventory reconciliation, um, there was an issue between the auditors and the entity that uh, was never resolved, even though they found um, a miscalculated rec reconciliation. The next point is the AUC 315, understanding the entity and its environment. Um, knowing the quotas and knowing the different um, parts of the company that could have led to the fraud. In this case, um, the manager was incentivized to meet uh, certain requirements and because he not, did not meet those requirements, um, it led to him acting uh, fraudulently. Uh, we saw the same thing with Wells Fargo and we saw it data back to here. Um, people knowing how a, a structure or an entity incentivizes or what quotas need to be met could be key signs of um, fraud throughout a company. And last of the AUC 330 that we're touching upon is the uh, performing audit procedures in response to assess risks and evaluating in audit evidence obtained. So again, this goes back to the miscalculation of reconciled inventory. Once that was found, um, that needs to be acted upon and it wasn't. Uh, they left that open-ended and it could have been, it could have exposed the fraud uh, that, was, that was occurring. So the second set of standards that we're going to talk about are PCAOB standards. Um, the big three that we're touching upon are AS1015, AS2201, and AS2510. So the first one deals with uh, professional due care, um, and we felt there was a lack of due care, obviously. Um, a major sub-point of this standard is professional skepticism, um, and that was, that was clearly not taken into consideration given the fact uh, there was a few red flags that were not further looked into or inquired about. The next standard, AS2201, deals with audit of internal control and reporting that internal control. Um, the auditors did find that there was internal control weakness within the department uh, that contained the fraud. Um, that should have been further looked into and that would have eventually revealed the fraud. SEC recognized this um, and they said that was a major player into what exposed the fraud. And then the final standard, AS2510, auditing inventories. Um, the auditor sh should have t taken a more substantial approach as to how um, this entity uh, carried out their inventory count, because um, clearly it, it, led, it led to a significant increase in their reported income, um, and exactly how they audit that inventory, documenting that, and then following those procedures would have led to misappropriation or the misreporting of those inventories.